Father God, we thank you for wisdom. And God, we thank you for revelation. Oh, Father, I pray that it flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. Father, I pray that you speak through my vocal cords and you think through my mind. None of me and all of you. And God, I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these, your precious people. Holy Spirit, you have the liberty to move up and down every aisle, in and out of every row, touch, heal, deliver, every television screen, every household, touch, heal, deliver, set free, speak a word. God, we declare that we draw closer to you, and you draw close to us. Father, overwhelm us with your presence in this room. Overwhelm us with your love. God, we are postured to receive the word of God. We thank you in advance for answers, illumination, wisdom. God, we praise you. We magnify your name. For you are God and God alone. Father, we thank you. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all of the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And XL Church said, oh, go ahead and shout about that one more time. All right, you may be seated in the house of God. We're going we're gonna to continue in this series, and uh, God has tr- strategically, as he always does, um, you know, he keeps us ahead of the curve. Uh, he, he loves us just that much. And right now we're in a series on relationships, and we're delving into it uh, with the pivot foot being the relationship with Jesus and the Father and uh, uh, the Father and Son, and, and taking some traits out of that relationship that that is guaranteed to benefit us as we live our everyday lives. Um, you know, as human beings and as believers, uh, one thing about becoming a Christian, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't exempt us from being human. <clears throat> That's why the word says he, the, 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 the Lord was touched. He's touched by the feelings of our infirmities, which, which simply means when you navigate this world as a believer, you're going to be involved with people. And navigating human relationships, listen to me, it takes skill. It takes skill on the job. It takes skill in the family. It takes skill in the marriage. It takes skill as a parent. Let me pause real quick. Uh, I need to clear up something I said last week. I want to make sure that, I, that, that it wasn't heard wrong. Last week I said, don't put your hands on nobody. I said, don't put your hands on nobody. I still mean that. You know, you don't get mad at your spouse and slap him in the face and, 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 and get mad at your husband and, and pop him in his lip and all this kind of stuff. You, you, you just, just keep your hands off of, uh, off of people. And then I followed up and said, except your wife and your kids. What I meant was, <laughs> I'm going to touch my wife. You know, you want to touch your, 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 your husband. But if those kids get out of line, you, you, you pop that little pull up and, you know, and, 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 and go ahead and deal with it. So I want to just make sure that, 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 that oh, no, no, I want to clear up. I did not say you can put your hands on your wife. I don't believe in that. Don't even call the church if it happens. Call J-S-O. J-S-O. Why? Because that's not right. You don't, you, you, we, we don't do that. My mama used to tell me, Derek, keep your feet on the floor. Kicking on folks when they come in his house, your little four-year-old, hard-headed, nappy-headed tail. Keep your feet on the floor, Derek. And I learned at an early age, you just don't put your hands on folks. You just don't, you just don't do that. So is there, is, are, are all minds and hearts clear on that? The pastor's not for putting your hand on people, except, you know, the jurisdiction you have with your wife and your husband. Your hands that way. You, you, you can do it with that. So relationships. So, so we have to learn to navigate these. We have to learn to navigate these relationships. And we're going to look at <clears throat> Jesus and how he came to the earth and, you know, with instructions from, from, the, from, 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 from God and, 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 and how to navigate it and why he was here and some stressful times he encountered while he was here. How did he handle that? So on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to look at that and we're going to apply those things in our everyday uh, relationships. Uh, I'm going to lead off with this. And you know, I want you to write this down. 
You can't overcome what you won't confront. So many times in relationships, we think we're, 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 we're flowing into things with God, but we're avoiding things that we feel like is going to cause uh, a, a conflict. But, but, but the Bible talks about it in Ephesians 4. Learn how, to deliver, learn how to deliver the truth in love. But it's hard to overcome what we won't confront. And I've sat down in countless uh, marital sessions and, 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 and stressful situations with parent and child and parent and youth. And, 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 and what it is, is, is it, it, it comes to a climax when you're tolerating certain things in a relationship and, and, and you say you're doing the word and we say we're praying, but how many people know when you encounter the Father, you come back out of that encounter in love and in truth. So we say we're doing these things, but the relationship or ships continue to be strained. Why? We refuse to confront things that's not delivering peace in that relationship. And that's not mean. That's not out of the character of God. You know, Jesus told Peter, look, you're, gonna, you, you're going to betray me. He told him that, and he told him, get behind me, Satan. I mean, you know, just, just stop talking all that stuff about not doing what, I'm, what I came here to do. So he confronted some things with his disciples. He, could, he confronted some things, and, and he did it out of love. But if you never confront these things, it's going to be hard to overcome them. That's number one. Number two, <clears throat> you've always heard me say this, life is long but on the heels of that, life has a way of muting the know-it-all and proudful spirit in relationships. Life has a way of muting the know-it-all and proudful spirits, spirit in relationships. And somebody says, how do you know that? Because life had a way of muting me, year number seven, in my marriage. Because why? You know, you know, I gotten married, and, and you know, there's marital conventions and, and all this stuff, relationship seminars on Saturday morning, and 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 my love language in my marriage was provision, make money, have a great living. But I didn't know how to be a husband. I did not know how to be a husband. I was a I was a husband for the first time in my life when I said I do, and hadn't read one book on the husband wife covenant relationship. And we did not become one flesh over those seven years. We remained to be individuals with a lot of remnants from our father's house, how we grew up, competing against the word of God that was teaching us how to be one and in oneness from the pulpit, but our father's house was competing against it. And guess what? Life had a way of muting my prideful self. Because no man could tell me how to be a husband. No man could tell me how to love my wife. No man could tell, and, and, and we were so private, but failing at home. So our relationship was failing, but we confused a good family with, with us and our kids with a great marriage. And by year seven, that confusion, it came to a head. And guess what? We almost got divorced right there in front of our pastors, right there at our hop off Bay Meadows Road. I'll never forget it. And guess what? Life had a way of saying, Derek, you need to shut up and learn how to do this. Why? Because if you don't, this relationship is absolutely over. What if I pray in tongues? It's absolutely over. What if I give an offering right now? It's going to be over if you don't learn natural skills on how to carry yourself as a loving, Galatians 5, 22, a loving, kind, gentle, patient, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness. If you don't know how to carry yourself like that, this thing is done. And it's really just that simple. Glory to God. <laughs> All right, you ready for the word of God? <laughs> Let's go to Matthew 22. Matthew 22. We've been stuck right here as our foundational scripture. And uh, we're going to stay right here and open up right here today. Matthew 22. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, relationships, uh, they break down. You know, they, they, they get tense. You know, they go south. You know, they get dull. 
You know, one thing in marriage, you don't want to build your relationship off of doing. You want to build your relationship off of being. Being with one another. You build your relationship off of doing things all the time when the doing stops. Or as you age and you can't do and you can't ride a roller coaster because your head is spinning, guess what? you got to learn how to be with one another and be in love with one another blissfully. And you do that by learning and mastering being and not allowing doing to be your foundation in that relationship. Matthew 22, a lawyer is basically challenging Jesus uh, on a relationship law. And it's, 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 we're going to see this. And uh, let's, just, let's just let the word of God speak to us. Matthew uh, 22. Say amen when you're there. Hallelujah. Matthew 22, verse 37. Now, <clears throat> Jesus said unto him, said unto him who? The lawyer who's kind of challenging Jesus on you know, who is my neighbor. Jesus said unto him, you shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and all thy mind. Next verse. This is the first and great commandment. Just hold right there, media. The first and great commandment is a relationship commandment. The word love is a relationship word. This is the first and great commandment. Next verse. <clears throat> and the second, watch this now, is like unto it, you shall love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. Relationship. As you love yourself. Relationship. 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 Somebody say relationship. Next verse. On these two commandments, on this curtain rod, on this curtain rod right here, these two commandments, you, you, you hang all of the law on the, uh, 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 law and the prophets on, this, on these two commandments. What is it? Love the Lord. Adore him. We just got through going through a series on the Lord prayer, on the Lord's prayer. It, it, it starts off. It starts off letting us know we're not, we're, you can't approach God, you know, in, with the individualistic mindset thinking he's going to hear your prayers and not hear your ex-husband's prayers. What do you say? I'm, I'm not going to allow you to say, I, my father, our father, which art in heaven, how to be, how to be thy name. That word hallow means we greatly revere him. He says, love the Lord with all of your, all of your heart, all of your mind greatly revere him. He says, that's the first one. He said, the second one is, love, your, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. How many people know it's hard to survive in relationships when you don't love yourself? Why? What happens? You place all of your insecurities, all of your suspicions over on the other party, not realizing you are self-destructing every relationship you encounter. Are people flawed? Yes. Are people imperfect? Yes. Will people rub you wrong? Yes. Do we disagree? Yes. But, but your pivot foot is your insecurities in your relationship. Your insecurities of what? Yourself. You haven't learned how to love yourself. So we study all kinds of relationship gurus and all kinds of relationship, we read all kinds of relationship books, and nobody never pays attention to, well, how do I love myself? How do I approach myself? Do I respect myself? Do I take care of myself? Do, my, do I see myself as significant? Do I see, do, do I see myself as someone who, 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 who has an opinion that can be objective? Do I see myself as someone who's flawed and imperfect and can make a mistake? Well, if I see myself like that and I'm loving myself properly, guess what? When others do that to me, I'm not going to charge it to their heart. I'm going to charge it to their head. I remember being in a relationship, and, and, and every time I, I was over the department, and every time I made a correction, the guy would come to me and say, well, I, I, didn't, I, I just want you to know I didn't, I, I, I didn't mean it like that. I, I didn't mean it like this. I didn't mean it like that, so on and so forth. I, I don't want you to think. And I finally looked at him, and I told him, I said, it's, if this relationship is going to grow and thrive, here's what I want you to start doing. Stop thinking for me in this relationship. If I had a problem, I would say something to you. If I thought you was terrible at what you do, I would try to help you get better. But you have all these self-imposing thoughts on yourself, 
and you're charging it to the entire relationship, listen, stop thinking for me in our relationship. I said, it's, it's nerve-wracking. It is stressful. My God, I'm, I'm, I'm all for you wanting to be better in your communication, but not once a week, not twice a week. And really, when you get corrected, you get corrected, that's when it really comes out. Well, I want to make sure that I'm not, what do you mean you make sure? Do you not trust the love of God in me? Do you not trust the love of God in this relationship? I'm not trying to correct you to make, to make you feel bad or feel lower than. That's not God. I'm trying to help you become better. That's why in this church, we develop people for them. That keeps you sober in that kind of relationship. Why? When they say, hey, I feel like God is calling me to start an evangelistic ministry. I feel like God is calling me to such, such, such. Well, we, we spent five years developing you. Now go do, the things of, go do the things of God. Go represent God. Why? We don't own you. God owns you. God placed us here out of his, own, or out of his ownership, and he gave us dominion over things here, but he never gave us ownership. God owns that person. Glory to God. Ephesians 4. Whew, relationships, man. I want to tell you if, you, if, you're, if, you, if your marriage is stressful and, 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 and you know it's stressful and you got things you want to say but you really can't say and, you know, that's a cone with your wife and you really can't go there and, you know, it's a, it's a construction cone right there and you really don't want to touch that and, 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 and you, can only, you can only go for so long with that. You got to put everything on the table in that relationship so you can see God himself thrive in it. When you think like that and you operate like that, we've learned you put self in the center. And self tells a husband, don't even bring that up to me. I don't want to talk about my dad. Just, just don't even bring it up to me. I, I don't want to talk about my mom. Don't mention her name to me. I don't want to talk about her. But what you don't realize, you not having a, 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 a worship of healing over that relationship is affecting your marriage. You not having a worship before the Lord, a worship of healing concerning your relationship with your dad is affecting how you receive correction from your husband. It's affecting that. And, 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 and I, have, I have respect for a lot of things uh, that's God ordained. And I tell you what, one thing that's God ordained I got respect for is the human law. <clears throat> what is that? You treat humans right. Most of the time, they'll treat you right. You treat humans bad. Well, I'm anointed. I get away with it. No, you won't. No, you won't. Well, well, I speak in tongues. I can get away with treating humans bad. No, you, no, you won't. Because Galatians 6 is be not deceived. Whatever you sow into that relationship, you're going to reap out of it. There's always a sowing and reaping component in relationship. Ephesians 4, uh, verse uh, 11. Are you out there? If he's for, <clears throat> and he gave some, and he gave some <clears throat> apostles, some prophets, verse 11, and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Here we go. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Watch this now, verse 15. Relationships. So what do we do? But speak in truth in love. Speak the truth in love. And when we do that, may grow up into him, him who? Christ, in all things, which, in, in, in God, which in all things is, is, which is the head, even Christ. We're going to grow up in him in all things, and he's the head, even Christ. He says, learn how to speak the truth in love. Learn how to do that. Let me give you a simple relationship skill that can that can remove your pride when you're wrong, and you think you're right, but you're wrong, but you think you're right, but you're wrong. Let me give you a simple relationship skill. I can see how I could have missed that. I can see where I could have went wrong. I can see how you, you could have heard that like that. 
What is that? It's just, man, I, I, you know, I, I want to speak the truth in love. You know, we go to our children. Listen, always lead with some kind of edification. And, and sometimes emotions get the best of you. And it's like I've told you 10 times not to leave these dishes in the sink before you go to bed. Get up, get in here, and wash the dishes. Dad, you just preach on pre- uh, uh, speaking the truth in love. I, 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 look, I love you. I ain't said nothing mean to you. Right now, this is discipline time. Just, just, just do what dad is asking you to do. But then there's times when, 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 when it's like, okay, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. I'm not going to go off. I'm going to come to you, and I'm really going to identify that you have a problem with your discipline in your life. You fall short on diligence about things in your life. And I come to you come to the daughter of the son and say, listen, me and mom love you. I hope you know that. All the qualities you bring to the table, this, 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 and this. I noticed the other day how you did this, 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 and this. So <clears throat> what I'm about to say to you, it's not any slight against you. It's just daddy wanting you to see get better. <coughs> daddy wanted to see you get better. Man, my throat is dry. Let me hit this. Uh, let me hit this coffee. I <clears throat> smoked a cigarette before I came out here. <clears throat> Maybe I need to scale it down to Marlboro. <coughs> what do you think, Boo? Newport's too strong. <coughs> I'm just kidding. <coughs> he smoked a cigarette in 25 years. <coughs> Had a drink, nothing, 25 years. Don't, that don't make me holy. It just makes me, I don't want to put poison in my body. <coughs> so I speak the truth and love to them. And guess what? They come out of that empowered to do better. And in relationships, when we speak the truth in love, I truly believe we are empowering people to come higher. John 10. Let's go to John 10. <clears throat> you ever had that little <clears throat> scratchy scratchy in your throat? <coughs> That's what I got. Ah. <clears throat> <sighs> Woo. <clears throat> well, with this pandemic, uh, you know, it's, it's tapering, but boy, you cough like that in a public place, people look at you, <laughs> run you clean out of there with their eyes. Verse <clears throat> 10, you know, <clears throat> You know, people are coming, trying to sow division into to, 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 to Jesus and the Father, and it's like, it's not going to happen. He's just like, it's not going to happen. And I'm telling you, in relationships, when you detect any kind of division, trying to be sown into it, you just got to be like, Jesus, it's not going to happen. Me and my wife, we're one. Me and my husband is one. You, sometimes you got to tell your parents that, look, me and my wife, we're one now. Sure, sure, sure we got a little thing going on here, but just, just pump the brakes now. We're one. And he answered, verse 25, Jesus answered them, I told you, <clears throat> and you believe not, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Verse 26, but you believe not, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow. That's a relationship That's a relationship uh, 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 rule we need to pay attention to that Jesus is teaching here. Verse 27, he says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they do follow me. Verse 28, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Listen, verse 30, I and my Father are one. At some point for a relationship to thrive, you have to have an element of harmony of mind. Listen to me. Be on guard against independent initiatives in a relationship that's, that's, that's more than one person. Be on guard against your independent initiatives 
in a relationship that's more than one person. In other words, if you're married, you can't, you can't, you can't operate in that marriage with independent initiatives all of the time. Why? We're growing in one. Me and my wife, has, we have a marriage ministry outreach. It's called One Flesh. And, and, and we started it two years ago, and, 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 and it's just designed to say, you know what? Um, we're always training towards oneness. We were not one in agreement at that altar. We were just two people who felt like, hey, we don't, this is the God on this truth. We don't want to be sinning here. We got a baby out of wetlock. We need the blessing of God in our life. That one true. And we just need to go ahead and get married so God can really flow. How many people know that's religious? That's, 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 that's law-based. God was going to bless us either way. But that is why we got married. And we later discovered, year five, oh, we didn't get married because we wanted to build a life together. We got married out of obligation. That's why we got all these independent initiatives. That's why you want to do your thing, I want to do my thing. That's why I don't understand your self-will, uh, you don't understand mine sometimes. Why? Because we got married out of obligation. No premarital counseling, no discussing father's house. It was baby, wedlock, you want the blessing? Stop shacking up, get married. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and do that. And then, no, when you signed up for that, it's like jumping in the pool and not knowing how to swim. It's easy to take off, grab your nose, and fold your legs and hit that pool and cool off. But I tell you what, by six feet down, you better know how to swim. And that's what happened in our relationship because what? We, 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 we had independent initiatives. And Jesus said, look, me and the Father, we're one. Nothing can come in and, 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 and divide us. Nothing can come in this relationship and separate us. We're one. What did he say? You see, you, you, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. It, it, what was he saying? You know, I'm not here with an independent initiative. And for relationships to thrive, you know, for them to be infiltrated by God's love, we can't have these independent initiatives and abort becoming one or harmony of mind. Is everybody hearing what, 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 what I'm saying here? <clears throat> Go over to God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians. Let's just let the word of God speak to us. Listen, wars are restarted, are started when relationships break down. Wars are ended when relationships are mended. <clears throat> wars are started when relationships break down. Mankind started with the relationship. They begin to multiply with relationships. Think about that. Relationship management is a skill that every human being needs. You can work with a highly intelligent person, a very smart person, but I tell you what, no one in the department likes them. Why? Because their lead foot is, I know what I'm doing. Not realizing, uh your likability factor is very low. I used to notice uh, when my kids were smaller, you know, I would, you know, I would come in the house and, and, and they would come, hey, Dad, how you doing? This, 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 this. And when my wife would come in the house, it was a little different greeting. It was a little bit more enthused, a little bit more, you know, uh, uh, engaging. Uh, uh, little, little, and I sensed the freedom for, for them just to speak and and, and just spill their school guts all over her and what happened. And, 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 but, 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 but with me, I began to sense, wow, I come in this house, it's like I'm an invader <laughs> on happy territory. So, Lord, I don't like this. Let me get myself together in the driveway. Let me get myself together in the car. I got to walk in this house with a smile on my face face. My wife was leaving the other day. I was in the yard doing something, and she was going uh, <clears throat> to work out that evening. And she was leaving, and I heard my daughter was leaving. And, I, and, I, and I, you know, as I always do, I said, look, angels guard you guys. Angels go before you. And they, and they, they, they you know, I, I watched them ride off, and, and as they cleared the, cleared the curve there, I, I went back to doing what I was doing. And I said, boy, every, I said, I said, boy those are some precious commodities in my car. And the Holy Spirit said, uh, treat them the same, way, the same way you say that when they leave. Treat them the same way when they come home. 
boy, here comes my precious commodities. Let me, get my, let me drop what I'm doing, put the remote down. Let me go out there and, 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 and greet them. See, I, I, you know, I, I felt good saying, Lord, my, my, my whole life is in that car. Oh, oh, oh you guys, oh, uh, angels go before you. But, but my God, they come home and that basketball game is on and she asks you to do this or do that. What happened to the, the, the most precious commodities in your life and all this kind of stuff? God says, you've been saying that for years. I'm tired of hearing it. I'm going to add something else to it. You have that same attitude when you hear that garage come up or those keys jingling or that garage door or that front door. Open up, you have the same countenance you have. And what I realized was what I, what, what I was calling, I'm sending the angels, angels before my family. I'm sending the angels before my wife. What it was, was fear-based. Why? Because the back end was weak. You know how it is, you know, as, as a husband sometimes. Can we just be honest in church? God forbid, be honest in church. God forbid, we tell the truth. You act like you don't hear the grocery bags. You really act like you didn't hear the garage go up. So you let one round come in. The cans hit the counter, doop, doop, doop. and then you. Oh, let me turn. Let me, let me pause. It. Let, 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 let me help. Shoot, she, she done came in with one round. She had eight bags. But in actuality, Derek, you heard the garage come up. You just kind of, you just kind of gamble. You, I wonder if she just got a, you know, a gallon of milk and some cornflakes and one bag. No, no. The same fervor you had when you sent the angels out before them when she left, be excited to receive her. And guess what? If she got 20 bags, you do it. If, if, if she got two bags, you get up. But please stop acting like and lying. When she asked you, did, you, didn't hear, you didn't hear me? No, I, I didn't hear you. Let me, how, how many more you got? What is that? Growing God. What is that? Relevant transparency. That relationship gets stronger when we begin to see, wait a minute now. Why are you so plugged into God when they leave to protect them? But you need that same anointing to receive them with love when they come home. Now, that goes for the wife, too, now. Receive the husband, too, now. You know, receive, receive, receive him, too. I'm not going to leave him out. Somebody say amen. 1 Corinthians uh, 16. 1 Corinthians 16. Relationships, man. Oh, Paul, Paul. Paul was a bad boy. And Paul was, he'd call you out, he'd praise you, he'd point you to God. He, he, he was just a bad boy when he came to relationships. But 1 Corinthians, we're going to pull out of this. Watch this now. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, <clears throat> verse 14. Let all things, is that what it says? No. Let all your things. Be done with charity. Let all your things be done with charity. What is that? You carry the weather with you in relationships. Well, she was acting funny, so hey, you, you, you want to go there? You know, I, I know Michelle Obama said, they go low, we go high. What about this? They go low, I'm going lower. You want to show your tail? Show your tail. I'll show you what showing your tail means. What is that? He said, no, 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 you, you, You're in possession of this. Learn to control yourself in relationships. Learn not to allow your emotions to drive you out of the character of Christ in your relationships. And I'm telling you, learn not to read faces in relationships when things get rough. Because faces say a lot of, work, a lot of things. Facial expressions can say a lot of things. And Paul says... Let, your, let, let, let all your things be done in charity, be done in love. Derek, I don't care what they act like. I don't care what it looks like. Let your things be done in love. Christ is in them and in you. You employ Christ. If they want to put Christ to the side, you employ Christ in your relationships. Let all of your things be done with charity. Let all of your things be done with love. Now, the Passion Translation says, let love and kindness be the motivation behind all that you do. 
Let love and kindness in your relationships be the motivation behind all that you do. Again, you can't be suspicious of everybody that you encounter in relationships. I say, I say, I say, suspicion will kill the fervor of a godly relationship. You take correction as you don't like me. I still love you. I adore you. But my God, you never, if, you, if, you, if, you're working, if you're working for your boss or whatever, you're never higher than correction or try it this way. My pastor made it clear to me, Derek, I always have an element of Trumpability. What did that mean? You got it all laid out. You got everything blue. Guess what? I, as the pastor, can come in and say, uh, let's, go, let's go with blue and white this time. Please don't take it as you're not doing your job. Just know <laughs> that I have an element of Trumpability. Somebody says, what does that mean? Well, in the relationships, it, 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 <laughs> me and my wife have mutual elements of Trumpability. There are certain things she can come in and say, no, nah, we're not going to do it like We need to do it like this. A boot. And I can come in and say, no, nah, we need to do it like this. But you know, you know what I mean. You, you know, company comes over, and you have company in your house, just that and the other, and you got relatives, in, you know, in from town, and, and, and so on and so forth, and you got the thermostat uh, uh, set on, on 76 there, and you kind of like to keep it there to keep it cool in the house, and this one is hot, this one is cold. But your distant cousin from Texas has decided to go upstairs Change that thermostat. It's warming up in here. My wife's cold. 80 degrees. Well, my wife is burning up. <laughs> and downstairs, going to go to that thermostat and change that one. Then the big dog walk in. <laughs> uh, why is it so hot in here? Come on, cuz. Man, man, look, the way we do it out west is, it's out west. <laughs> in here, <laughs> if I have authority over this household, uh, you want to throw us something? I, 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 we, we have several throws in, in the trunk here for your wife, something, you know, to, to warm her up. But, but when I came in, there's an element of Trumpability now in, 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 in the relationship. Now, I'm not saying undermine your dad or undermine your mom, although mothers, a lot of times you can get the spirit of line on you just to protect your kids. I know it's quiet in here, but you can get the spirit of lying on you just to protect your kids from the wrath. And that's not good because your kids are picking up on it. Hey, well, what, time they, what time do they start their homework? Oh, they've been doing it ever since 5 o'clock. Look, I told you, Daddy, you started at 5. He asked you, you started at 5. You hear, you hear what I'm trying to tell you? It's like, yeah, 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 I hear it. And, boy, you feel good about that. The mother hen is, is taking care of her children. But what are you doing? You're sowing division now. You're, you're undermining his authority now. So be on guard against that. I told you, Christians tell subtle lies, too. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Fault number one, I want to pull this out and, uh, and give it to you. <clears throat> you've, you've heard me allude to this uh, <clears throat> earlier in the teaching. A few weeks ago, obedience does not lead to love, but love does lead to obedience. By saying love the Lord with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind, Christ is revealing that the love of God, if truly present in us, will permeate every aspect of our being. It will permeate every aspect of our being, and one of those beings is relationships. The love of God should muzzle your temper. The love of God is, the love of God that shed abroad in our hearts, it's, it, it's just, the Holy Spirit should speak to us and say, those words are going to have dire consequences. You keep, you keep uttering the word, you're going to get a divorce. One day he's going to take you serious. You keep saying what you're going to do, one day she's going to take you serious. What is that? The love of God, it should be present in us. It should be evident in us. And I'm going to tell you something. No growth in Christ is tested more than in relationships. We get a chance to see our level of Christ-likeness in all relationships. I say, I say, I say, we get a chance to see our Christ-likeness in all relationships. And the highest relationship you're going to see your Christ-likeness in or see your developed Christianity in 
it's going to be marriage. <laughs> it's going to be marriage. Why? Because it will be blissful the first 60, 90 days. You're going to show the body of Christ how marriage is done. You're going to show your covenant friends how it's done. You vowed not to do this, vowed not to do that. What you didn't account for was two minds occupying one space, wanting to do different things at certain times. You didn't account for that, did you? And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, man, I wish my good mornings would go back to see you later. <laughs> my God, we, <laughs> we signed up until death do us part. Whew. Lord, have mercy. Well, I tell you what, this thing is killing me already. Listen, it should grow us up in that relationship. We get closer to God when relationship disagreements come along. We get closer to God when relationships, uh, 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 when the enemy tries to, to insert division into a relationship. We go to God. We remove self from the center. We put God in the center, and that relationship will continue to strive. When Christ is permeating every aspect of our being. Thought number two. In a healthy relationship, we should feel valued before we feel loved. Oh, I'm so in love. No, I'm so valued. Because you can love something and not value it. Guess what? You, you throw it on the floor. <laughs> Look, I tell you what. <clears throat> I don't care. I don't care how heated it gets. With me and my wife, I ain't throwing away no $6,000 ring in no river. I value this. And she ain't, she's showing, you know, throw, why wouldn't you do that? Now, she may take that Apple Watch off and sling that baby across the woods, and we're not, we don't argue like that. But I do know believers that will take that ring off and fling it in the heat of the moment. But, 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 but things you value, you take care of. You maintain. You treat it with tenderness. There's some things you love in your house. That, man, please. You love your dishes. You love the certain pot you got, but, man, you still scorch it up when you try to stir fry something. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, that china sitting over in that cabinet, you value that. Why? It came from five generations, and you value that. So in relationships, you want to sense that you're valued before you feel like you're in love. Because, see, you, 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 when you feel like you're in love before you feel like you're valued, everything gets cloudy. Then all of a sudden, in love got you married, but being not valued gets you abused. See, in love can get you married, but being not valued can get you abused. How is that even possible? Because, because you, never, you, you never valued the person. You didn't value their heart. You didn't value the, the, that daughter that that dad gave you at, down at that. You didn't value that man that, 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 that God gave you. So guess what? You don't value it, you abuse it. You abuse it. <clears throat> Next talk. Good relationships requires a skillful navigation. Watch this now. Without labeling your feelings on your partner or friend when difficult moments, feelings, conversations, and thoughts inevitably arise. Good relationships require skillful navigation without labeling your feelings and emotions on your wife, on your spouse, on your boss, on your subordinates, on your partner, on your friend when difficult moments come up. It's a moment. The person is still nice. It's a moment of tension. The person is still uh, 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 Christ-like. But guess what? You label them with your feelings, and you take that, and now you say, this person is like this. No, you label that person when you was in your feelings. And when you got in your feelings, you said, that person is mean. That person's not mean? How do you label that person with that? 
Good relationships require skill for navigation without labeling your feelings on the person. How many people have done that before? I have. The rest of you will just cast line demons at you right here at the end of the service. You've gotten mad, you've gotten ticked off, and you said, man, this person is just this. It's like, wait a minute, it's just a moment now. How did you take the moment and label the person? I'm just saying this church is it. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, the email didn't come through. Oh, oh, I understand that, but how do you take that and label the church? You take your feelings and you label things and entities and people in the relationship, and guess what? You'll find yourself lonely. You'll find yourself lonely. Why? Because nobody is good enough to uphold the standards that you abort yourself. <clears throat> Next on. Be open and accepting to accepting of the good and the flaws. In relationships, be open and accepting to the good and the flaws because you surely possess both of these as well. I'm telling you, relationships are smooth. You know, you said, look, what time does the ship leave in Port Canaveral? Well, I mean, hey, I mean, <laughs> okay, we got a sedan. They got a Suburban. They got a Texas Cadillac. They're going to pick us up. We're going to put our luggage in the thing, so on and so forth. Now, if you, if you sit there and wait on them, and not realize you were late once before. You was late once before picking somebody at the uh, airport. But if you don't realize that about yourself, you're not going to accept them running behind. Next time, see, this is why I always drive my own car. Because people, I, I, I mean, they're just late all the time. They're not late all the time. you got to be open to accepting the good and the flaws because you, you have a revelation that you surely possess both of these as well. And when you can see your faults, remember, love thyself. When you can see your faults, the faults of others become common, and you don't label the person. You pray for them. You grace them. And if you can ever foresee yourself needing grace and mercy in a relationship, extend it every chance you get. My, my God, baby, I was, I was trying to get the kids, and, and they, end up, they end up charging us. The extra fifty dollars. I was trying to get there. I, I, man, man, it was my week to pick them up. I don't want to mess it up. I, look, just, 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 just stop. I kind of knew when I asked you, and here it is. I kind of knew when I asked you to pick them up how it was gonna go, what you was gonna come running and saying when you was late. I kind of knew that, and it's like, uh. <laughs> now when you ran out of gas at Target. Because you don't like to fill them up. You just get in and drive to the lights on, then I got to fill them up. I showed up, and I was like, my first thing was, you okay? Everything okay? Just sit right there. Matter of fact, go in the store. I get the gas, I bring it to you. I did that. Well, how can you respond like that, uh, sweetheart? I respond like that because I have a revelation of my flaws, too. But you fall, you're falling short on your revelation of yours. Next thought. We're wrapping up here. Thriving relationships require... Social investments. A thriving relationship ship, requires social investment. We got to be willing to invest in our relationships for them to thrive. You know, you, 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 you can't just sit back and let everything come to you. And then when it doesn't come to you, the relationship is not what it is. No, no, no. We're, we're, I challenge anybody right now that feels like somebody is slighting them, somebody is not contacting them enough, somebody is not saying thank you enough, somebody is not appreciative enough, go look at the text thread and see how much social investment you have in the relationship saying thank you. I'm, I'm grateful to God for you. Hey, the other day you did. Go look at the text thread and what you'll realize is you like to receive it, but you don't know how to give it. And God wants us to know how to receive it because that's his love. And he also wants us, wants us to know how to give it. So if you got a problem with them, why don't you go look and see, well, how much social investment do I have in this relationship? How many times have I said, hey, how's your day going? I pray that your day goes well. How many times have I done that? How many times have I said, I really believe in you. Just want you to know that. Listen, I... <laughs> I live to have social investments. 
I recognize people's strengths. Son of mine was on the road with his kids, this, that, and the other, and I called him up. I said, hey, man, where you at? He said, man, I'm headed up north. I said, okay, cool, 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 cool. I said, what is it? He said, well, you know, you know, mom's birthday, this, that, and the other. We're going. I said, boy, he said, I know it, man. I'm just, man, she just texted me and said, the food is waiting on me. I said, brother, you bless. I said, you bless. He said, yeah, I talk to her all the time. You know, she called me and she talked to me. This is dual social investment. I said, brother, when you get there, I'm just going to kick up and just bask in the love. And it's just something about showing up and that mama is just right there waiting. A hand and foot. Oh, what do you want, sweetheart? You want something to eat? You want something to drink? Okay, no, 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 we, we got it. Man, those are social investments. And let me tell you something. People don't forget him because he was looking forward to that. So we got to look at our relationships and say, how much investment do we make in them? If it's stale, if it's awkward, if it's funny, if it used to be this and it's not this, go look and see how much social investment you have in the relationship. Next thought. A person's heart, a person's heart houses all of their emotional capital. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. See, we got to know this about relationships. A person's heart houses all of their emotional capital. They are always owed an ROI, return on investment. When any of that capital is released into your life. She said, I do. Guess what? She's owed ROI, return on that investment. He said, I do. Guess what? Return on investment. They're always owed that. Why? Because as they release this emotional capital into relationships, know this. It shouldn't be one way thank yous on the text thread all the time. It just shouldn't be. When I first started uh, XL Church, year one, a guy, you know, person says, man, I just, you know, I just, I just feel like this. I just feel like that. I said, and I said, man, this don't go relationship is stressing me out. <laughs> and why is it doing that? Because you, you, you keep charging me with, well, I feel like you said this. I feel like you meant this. I feel like, and I'm like, brother, do you understand what I'm facing? And I don't get one thank you, one I'm praying for you, one I support you. Are you kidding me? What did he want? He wanted a social investment coming his way, but not sending none my way. Somebody said, what did you do? I backed out of the room like Noah's sons. I said, man, this, this relationship is high maintenance. I, I, I just can't do this. What was it? I'm investing, but man, I need some encouragement right here too. Listen, mamas need some encouragement in that house too, don't you, mamas? Single moms need some encouragement around here. Those husbands need some encouragement too. Listen, let me tell you something. Grandmamas need some encouragement. <laughs> I see some kids getting smart with their grandmama. I, I, I never got away with that. I, I, I never got away with it. What did you say, Derek? Now, I know I taught you better than that. No, sit down. That's what that means. Now, you run out, don't you run out of that street again. No, nope, sit down. But I see some kids just kind of testing the water. Page 59 in the book says what you got to do is to keep their morale up. You know, you got to, it's like, no, 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 no. When there's danger, I don't play with that. Sit your tail down somewhere. <laughs> Next thought. This is big. The dominant narrative in relationships can't be that we are love consumers. It needs to be we are love givers. If the dominant narrative in your relationship, any relationship you have, is you're a consumer of the love, but you fail to give it. The dominant narrative in any relationship can't be that you consume all of the thank yous, all of the support, all of the I believe in you, all of the I love you, all of the I appreciate you, all of the I'm, I'm thankful for you, but you're not disseminating anything. Why? Because you built a relationship on you consuming love and not giving it to. So you don't want the dominant narrative. It wasn't like that with Jesus. Jesus became obedient, the Bible says, unto death in that relationship. See, we can't be love consumers only. 
We can't be thank you consumers only. We can't be I support you consumers. We, we, we just can't. We got to see that and go, okay, this is the dominant narrative in this relationship. She's always texting me how much, and I'm never doing anything. You consume. You consume love very well. But for that relationship to thrive and not get lopsided, you got to learn how to be a love giver. <clears throat> Marriages thrive when couples understand this right here. When they, when they understand this right here, it, they thrive. Why? Because when you understand this law right here, you're not high maintenance. <laughs> oh, my God, I just feel so left out. I feel so, I, I, I don't know if my season, I just, I, I, I just don't know if, uh, uh, Derek, Derek uh, oh, oh, Z, I just don't know if you're thankful for me. I just don't know if you're grateful for me. W what's wrong with you? Oh, 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 oh. You didn't consume none this week. I ain't seen you none, huh? I didn't see you none. I didn't see you enough this week, huh? Because you're used to consuming. That's why you feel out of place. Because your dominant narrative is you're consuming love but you're not giving it. you got to reciprocate it, too. And it's not that your season's up. It's not that, you, 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 you know, a uh, 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 dad doesn't love you. It's not that uh, uh, your boss doesn't love you. It's not that your boss doesn't value you. It's just, guess what? When your consumption stops, you get a revelation of, well, I'm not giving it. Uh, this whole relationship is built off me consuming love and not me giving it. Oh, boy. Boy, it's quiet up in here. Ooh, glory to God. God is teaching us some stuff. Next on. In relationships, the Holy Spirit always helps us to identify and confront, watch this now, our peace disturbers. The Holy Spirit will help you identify. He's going to give you the words to speak the truth in love to confront your peace disturbers. How many people know that person can just be in a room, and for some reason, you on edge. You tense. Something has disturbed the peace of that relationship. But the Holy Spirit will give you revelation, will speak to you, and help you, help us identify, why is my peace so disturbed right here? Oh, I need to, I need to start giving some love. My gosh, <laughs> good gracious life. Oh, I need to stop being a consumer only. I got to get some love too. I never forget, I never forget, I grabbed my pastor's bags, walked them out, put them in the truck, and, and boy, it was a rough day. Correction was flying left and right, and I'm dropping balls and all this kind of stuff. And, 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 and I said, well, I said, what are you about to do? Ah, I'm about to put some steaks on the grill, man, just kind of hop in the pool and just have a ball. God is good. Life is good. I was like, oh, gosh, uh, give, me, give me something, just something other than, man, the, the, the correction that I got today. Just give me something. He said, man, I love you. I, I, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Matter of fact, we'll, we'll, we'll be playing some golf tomorrow. I, I, I'll see you then. I said, okay, cool, cool, cool. And I'm still messed up that evening. Why? Because I wanted to consume some love instead of saying, hey, may your day be blessed. May your evening be peaceful. And I speak the peace of God over your evening. And I declare that steak is juicy and well. And you just experience the love of God with your family uh, 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 this evening on that patio. And walked away from it. What did I do? I gave some. I, I, I wasn't looking for it to consume. I gave it. And guess what? Everything stays kosher. But when you walk away, you're like, yeah, steak. <laughs> Pool, Right. Backyard, your family. Well, guess what? I don't even know if I'm coming or going here. No, Derek. You just got corrected. You didn't get any, you didn't consume any love today. Guess what? You should have gave it. This was the day to give it. This was the day to encourage. And your heart wouldn't be feeling like that. But you know, you know, you know what we do? We hop in the car and we, sweetheart, I just, I don't know, man. I just, we call up our girlfriend. I don't know. If, I, I just, what's wrong? I, I, I don't know. And here you go, spreading division and gossip, then all you had to do was give love when the consumption fell short. Next thought. Two minutes. <clears throat> this is big. Develop a healthy response habit in your relationship. A healthy response habit. My responses are, my responses 
are founded in the things of God. I have a healthy response habit to tense situations. I have a healthy response habits to situations and circumstances. I have a healthy response habit when I disagree with what you're saying, but I know how to respond. Just because I disagree doesn't mean I dislike. I have a healthy response habit. I, I'm, I'm, you, you, we got to develop that in relationships. The Bible says, be slow to speak and swift to hear. Sometimes in relationships, it's just time for you just to be quiet and just listen. There's nothing more frustrating than a person that just yicks and yaks and talks and yicks and yaks and talks and yicks and yaks. It's like, my gosh. When I was around my pastor, I was trying to get his heart and how he thought. But boy, I seen some people around him, and it's just, they're just talking. So you will never... <laughs> You will never get a person's heart if you talk all the time in the relationship and never just hush. My grandma used to say, hush. Sit your manish, omnish, tail down. Hush, Derek. Couldn't hear nothing. So a healthy response habit. Next thought. Every relationship develops patterns. We got to know this now. Every relationship will develop, develop patterns. They'll have repeated emotional responses and initiatives. Every relationship is going to have them. And when you try to change the hard wiring of a person in a relationship, forget about it. Every relationship is going to have repeated patterns. I know without a shadow of a doubt that my wife has certain patterns in our relationship. And they're not bad. And they're repeated. And she knows that I shadow of that. I have them as well. I have them. But when you don't realize that this is, this is a pattern, this is it's not bad, it's just this is them. You try to change them. You try to change their heart wiring. And it's like, now, Derek, you've lost your cell phone. You pat around for a minute, you'll say, oh, I might have left it. Uh, let's see, no, nah, I think I might have left it. Okay, maybe on the counter. No, nah, I think it's in the garage. But if she lose her cell phone? Oh, my God, what, what, what is it? My phone, my phone, my phone, my phone, my phone, my phone. Uh, uh, we just left Target. You, you think it's, you think, I, I don't know if it's on the counter. I don't know if it's on the counter. Check your purse. Well, let, me, let me check it. Let me check it. Oh, I don't hear it. I don't hear it. Oh, my God. You know, that's how she responds <laughs> when that phone goes missing. You know that. You know that pattern. So don't, 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 don't freak out because it's there. Wife says, did you pay the bill? Uh-huh. Don't lie to me now. Did you, did you pay the bill? Yeah. I paid it. And his, I paid it is as soon as we finish this, I'm logging on, and I'm paying it. But guess what? <laughs> Man, that pattern right there is like, for the love of God. Man, am I not approachable? You can just say, I haven't paid it, but as soon as we finish it, matter of fact, um, uh, let, let me pause and pay it right now. Just, just say that. But when she realizes your look, your tone, and your response, she knows that emotional pattern. And we get offended when they say, now, are you telling the truth? I'm telling the truth. And then what we do is we exaggerate our, our, our response. We don't have a healthy response habit. We just, man, you just don't believe me. You just don't do this. And I'm just tired of being around here. And I'm trying to tell you that I paid the thing. And I'm trying to tell you that I paid it. And you know what? Let me just go back here and get myself together. Oh, let me see. Let me see. My, my, my God. Now, all you got to do is just go look and just see if it's paid. And for once and for once and for all, I pray that you'll start trusting me here because, man, I'm just sick of you confronting me with this stuff. Da, 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 da. And it's like, you lied. <laughs> and you're still lying after you paid the thing. Wow. Every relationship has emotional patterns. <sighs> oh, boy. I got to finish these three. <clears throat> Healthy relationships practice relationship flexibility. Relationship flexibility. Hey, my parents are coming in town, so on and so forth. Now, I know the guest room's got a queen, a queen bed. We got the, uh, the California king. I just would just go buy them sheets and put them, put them in the master bedroom. 
uh, but, the, but, the, but uh, the guest bedroom ain't got no TV in it. And the playoffs are on. What, what, sweetheart, what you can do is you can just go upstairs and just watch the, watch the game. But my parents, you know, I, I don't want them traveling upstairs with the steps. And they can, man, I tell you, why is it that I take the back seat? I thought the Bible says when you left your parents, you cling to me. <laughs> so I, I don't have no priority in this relationship. My gosh, man, get some flexibility. Get some flexibility in the relationship. So, so guys, you know, you're hanging out with friends. Guys, we're going out tonight. Yeah, we're going to go bowling. And we reserve four lanes. There'll be four people on each lane, so on and so forth. And, and you get there, and one person from the church is just kind of just a knot on a log, just muck in the mire. <laughs> hey, you're not going to join us for it? Nah, just, nah, I'm good. I'm all about top golf, just so you know. I'm not a good bowler, so I don't know who booked this. Well, just get in and have fun. Nah, I just, uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'll just sit back. You guys need some water or something, I'll do that, and I'll get it for you. Refreshments, I can run. I can be the, I can be the runner. It's like, where's your flexibility at? Why, you're not going to always get your way. You're going to find yourself as a believer being left out. Why? Because you have no relationship flexibility. You got to be flexible. People have other agendas when they go out. Flex. <laughs> Next off. Relationship anger and offense. Watch this. Relationship anger and offense are unsustainable. You need to know this about your relationships. Relationship anger and offense are unsustainable. Listen, they will destroy us from the inside out. You can't sustain offense. You cannot sustain that kind of anger. It will destroy you from the inside out. And avoiding the conflict is destroying us too. Why? Because we tell our kids to walk in love, but our kids know when you're acting funny towards your parents. Our kids know when you're acting funny towards your, towards your spouse. Our kids know when you're acting funny towards your, just roast the pastor at dinner. Just roast them. Kids know that. Listen, you're offended. And you're angry. It's not sustainable. That's why the Bible says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. That's another level of disagreement. It's wrath. You're angry, and you can't sustain that. It kills us from the inside out, and it'll kill that relationship. Last thought. In order to have thriving, authentic relationships, we have to respect the principle, and this is where we're going to pick up next week, we have to respect the principle of consequences. And I didn't have that respect the first seven years of my marriage. But I tell you what, you wake up real quick when you hear certain words in a relationship. I know you do in marriage. I know I did. Hey, I'm going to be happy just not with you. Huh? Yeah, your, 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 your meanness, your suspicion, your all this, so on and so forth. You Blaming it on your daddy, blaming it on your mama, all this kind of stuff. It's come to a head. It has consequences. Guess what? And God still loves you. I still love you. Kids are going to still love you. I'm going to make sure you are good in their eyes. But I cannot see us going any further with this thing being like that. What happened? You have, there's consequences to what? Your actions, our words, our actions, our words. There's consequences. You are either sowing or reaping. And when you sow those kind of things that's contrary to what God calls the tr- speaking the truth in love, there's consequences. So when I approach my relationships, I approach them knowing, now there's consequences to what you're about to say here. Be careful. Be careful. I know, I know you may be, but be careful now. Be careful now. I know she might have, be careful now. Why? Because in order to have a thriving, authentic relationship, we have to respect the principle of consequences and not just think, you'll always be here. I'm going to talk to you any kind of way I want to. Don't do that. He'd never leave his kids. I tell you what, don't respect the principle of consequences. And he's going to trust those kids with God. And he's going to go on and be happy. I could never see him. Okay. You have to respect the principle of consequences in relationships. Were you blessed by the word of God? Yeah.